been a record breaker, taking credit as an educator. I've been known to spit the flows and make it shaky, shaky thing. Popping, locking, stopping, let it hang. Watch us as we drop this hip hop, it's like it stays. We make the whole room drop and everybody sang. We want the funk. We gotta have that funk. Oh, we kick it old school. We think we're so cool. We take it back to the past. We gonna act a fool. Up, up jumps the middle finger. Make my Jaeger just a little. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Sports Buzz, of Fanatical View. I am your host, Scott D. Lewis, here live in studio Comcast Cable, Channel 23, downtown Danbury, Connecticut, on this January 17th day. Another pretty cold one, waiting on some potential snow this weekend. Um, perhaps a wintry mix overnight, but warming up during the day tomorrow, so it shouldn't really be a problem yet with the weather tomorrow, although the morning could be a little bad as the uh, in-studio speakers come on once again. This is a recurring thing every week with that. I love it. Reminding me of my Fatty Roots and the Fatty Roots uh, live and direct show that I need to talk about. But yes, it is a little chilly out there. Uh, and this weekend is going to be very cold Sunday and into Monday. Mucho frio, as it were, and we'll see what happens with the snow this weekend and what we get. We could get our first real taste of some nasty stuff since uh, we really haven't had any snow except for that freak snowstorm we had early, very early, probably before the official first day of winter, uh, back maybe early December, late November. Um, but I digress. I am joined at the beginning of the show for once by somebody, still not my sidekick, right-hand man, Mr. Bob Rock Jr., whose show Spotlight on, on runs Tuesday nights and nine Wednesdays at 12. And you'll be happy to see that a lot of his old shows have finally ended up online. Bob shared a bunch from the uh, public access uh, website itself of his recent shows and I uploaded and uh, put onto YouTube and then shared also onto his Facebook page uh, some of his older shows that had already uh, disappeared off the public access website. So you can see a bunch of his shows if you search them out on YouTube and uh, on the public access uh, page and on Bob's Facebook page. And that includes the Danbury Westerners Roundup is there uh, which was a great uh, event, uh, like usual, and uh, that featured Chris Chambliss and Danbury's own uh, Andrea Gardner, who most local people would uh, recognize that name. She gave, gave a great speech that day uh, as she accepted the Siri Award uh, this year. So uh, if you're looking to check that out, it is now finally officially up there on YouTube uh, and on uh, the Facebooks and all that stuff. Uh, but let's say hello to uh, the strange man who is back in action, ready to wish us Happy New Year, and in studio to do so, sitting behind the cameras. So hello, strange man. How's it going? Okay, Scotty. I want to wish everybody Happy New Year's. And uh, definitely uh, shout out hi to everybody at Danbury Commons. Ah, I just picked a strange man up at the commons, toward and, the grounds. Very nice. And I have two predictions from two good friends of mine okay. and, uh, for, for the football on, on the weekend coming up. I'll wait when you're talking about football. Oh, we're going to hold the predictions until we get into it? Yep. And okay. uh, I really appreciate, you know, the ride, Scotty, when I was hitching down here because it is it's dark cold, cold, cold out there. Strange. They don't call it January for nothing. Strange Man is a uh, cyclist. He gets around on his bike quite often and uh, on foot as well. And certainly very cold out. So, uh, yeah, I picked him up, got him into the studio, and he is here. He was having some difficulties locating the uh, phone number, which I don't have in front of me now because there was a miscommunication. There it is, 203-792-4101 if anybody would like to call. We are here until 7. Also, uh, it is worth mentioning, Tyler is not here this week, so Jenna, the production assistant extraordinaire, steps right in. No problem whatsoever. She says, sure, she will help out. She's on the audio board uh, making sure everything gets done. I will mention again, Fatty Roots Live and Direct uh, premiered uh, last week, last Thursday, to rave reviews, and the, and the reviews are in. If you watch one concert film featuring a reggae band on a public access station on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock, this is the one to watch. 
That's it. Fatty Roots live and direct this Saturday night uh, airs again at 10 o'clock. Um, it's also on next Thursday the, uh, as well on the 24th at 10 o'clock. It'll be on one more time in early February. We'll talk about it then. But Fatty Roots live and direct also on the YouTube if you'd like to check it out, it's getting a decent amount of views and also, in all honesty, getting some really great reviews. Uh, so I'm very happy to get the response. The band's been thrilled with it. And uh, hopefully the viewers here of Channel 23 get to enjoy it as well on television. Very nice. And if you're into my photography, you can go to Roadside Attractions and check out that show up at the Stratford Library, still up all the way through the end of February. I'll talk about that a couple more times, I'm sure. All right, let's get to the football, Strange Man. Interesting weekend. Uh, you know, not that many great games until the final game, finally on Sunday. But on Saturday, it was Chiefs in a cold and a snowy day. Uh, just really manhandling the Colts, 31-13. Uh, to 13. The Colts came in hot, winning 10 of their last 11 games, dismantling the Texans in the first weekend of the, of the playoffs, and uh, feeling like they were going to give the Chiefs maybe a little bit of a contest. Andrew Luck was back. Uh, but the Chiefs, much maligned defense from the year. We know they got a great offense, but there's a lot of questions about their defense. The defense was locked, locked in and rock solid. And uh, they put the Colts in the deep freeze, uh, coming away with that victory 31-13. And then Saturday night, uh, as we see right there, it was the Rams running by the Cowboys 30-22. Now, I mean, the final score was a one-score one game. The game had a feel like the Rams really had full control of it. And for the most part, I've heard all week the game was no contest. But the Cowboys were in it. They were within striking distance, uh, but they could never get it done. And they couldn't stop the Rams on the run at all on the rushing attack. Over 200 yards combined by C.J. Anderson, a player who's been cut three times this year, and they picked up off the scrap heap late in the season to be uh, a one-two punch with, of course, Todd Gurley, the uh, amazing player that they have. And they both came up huge and just dominated ball control, ball possession, time of possession, and uh, really played a conservative uh, offensive attack. And uh, we'll get to the strange stat in a second to back that up. Um, and it was just an interesting game. But I, met, I, I had this pegged all the way, too, though. Everybody was on the Cowboys, and I said, the Cowboys have made hay down the stretch of the season by playing at home. Get them out on the road, and they're going to wilt like they always do. And they were knocked out of it. The Cowboys can do only one thing and one thing only, and they, that's make big plays out of broken plays. If they don't come up with a big broken play, they really didn't have anything. Ezekiel Elliott did not get the rushing attack going, and they couldn't stop the run with their defense, and it was all Rams. Scotty, if I can say something about the Cowboys, yeah, they they can you know they beat the Giants at the Giants for the last game of the year. The Giants right. were a heartbreaker for the Giants, so the Cowboys can win on the road. But, that game was know, meaningless, and they were playing the Giants. It was meaningless. I understand. My and there point was, a was lot that of my point there. was that they had uh, Actually, made I this. I was rooting for the Giants, you know what I mean? Right, but my point was that they had made a run down the stretch of the season. By winning four, out of, playing four out of their last six games at home, including three straight at one stretch, to turn their entire season around, and I, you know, I had a feeling once they got back out on the road, because remember they were also shut out at Indianapolis. They did win that giant game last week, but the other road game they played during that final six-week stretch, they were shut out in Indianapolis. Um, all right, we want to get to the strange man. You're calling it trivia. I was going to call it a stat, but the. Uh, uh, yeah, it's good. I mean, this is very interesting because I don't think it ever happened before. And I'll, and I'll let you, you know, read it as I wrote it. True or false? Maybe we'll get a phone call on this. Both winning QBs on Saturday, January 12th did not throw a touchdown pass. You had Patrick Mahomes. You had Jared Goff. You had those high-octane offenses with the Rams and the Chiefs. And they both won. But true or false, did they not? Oh, that camera got kicked. Something happened with that camera, Bob. We're going to have to watch out for that uh, camera shot there as we're seeing an extra part of the studio. 
And he goes live with the camera move right there. Nice. Uh, did they throw for a touchdown? We'll give people a couple minutes. 203-792-4101. And uh, to see if anybody wants to call in and give us an answer on that. But that is interesting with those two young offenses, high-octane offenses. And, uh, you know, did they or did they not? You know, victory. And has it happened before? Throw for a touchdown pass. Sunday, the uh, boring games continued, and they really continued big time with that 1 o'clock game as it was a snooze fest up in Foxborough. Uh, Patriots, the temperature was below 25 degrees, which was a bad omen for the Chargers. We mentioned the week before they got lucky in Baltimore with the weather being in the 50s and sunny. So it wasn't as cold for them, and it was going to be much difficult, more difficult in colder weather in Foxborough this past weekend, which it was. Thankfully, you know, it was played at 1 o'clock, so they were in the sun for part of the game, but it didn't matter. After it was 7-7, the Patriots came right out. Usually they would uh, defer and uh, yeah, kick the ball off, but they decided in this game, for whatever reason, they were going to give Brady and the offense the ball first. And they took a time, uh, you know, a time-consuming opening drive, seven, eight minutes, um, and scored. The Chargers came right, right back and tied it at seven. And then after that, it was all New England. By you the time it, it was halftime, Patriots, Scotty, you know, they took the football and they ran with it right out of the shoe. By the time it was halftime, it was 35 to seven. Sony Michelle had three touchdown rushing touchdowns. The rookie. Three touchdowns in the first half. I mean, unbelievable. Has that ever happened? Look that stat up. A rookie in his first playoff game ever going for three touchdowns and all of them coming in the first half. Rivers now 0-8 against Brady all time. Um, and the Patriots now are 12-1 on the AFC divisional round games at home with the bye week. So, you know, they just take care of business. The final score, 41-28. It was nice to see Julian Edelman have a real big game, uh, coming up with big catches all over the place. He has been, uh, you know, a little bit slow to get back to full speed since the injury of last year, but that's a good sign for them. Gronkowski mostly was used as a blocking tight end, and he was paving the way for that rushing attack. Uh, they were up around the 200 mark as well. He had a couple catches, didn't he? Yeah, uh, yeah. but they only his first catch came in the second half. They really used him mostly as a blocking tight end, and it was a big time of possession game for them. Ball control, every drive. I mean, they finally had to punt late in the first half for the first time, and then the, uh, the Chargers fumbled the punt. Patriots recovered and went for another touchdown. Uh, so they really just ran away with it. The final score not indica indicative of uh, what this game was about, 41-28. The Chargers got a bunch of garbage time points late, uh, but it was all over for them early, 35-7 at the half. Um, and the Patriots playing up the chip on their shoulder. Nobody believes in us. Everybody's talking us down, saying we were mediocre this year. And they were. I mean, losing five games this year, three of them were blowouts where they got destroyed um, on the road. And, uh, you know, so they didn't look like a vintage Patriots team. They somehow still got the bye week in the second seed, and they took advantage of that. Now they're going to have to head to Kansas City for a tough one, a rematch of a game earlier this year. But the other game from Sunday, and uh, this was the only tense, intense, close, hard-fought game. Saints rallying past the defending champion Eagles. Tyler's not here this week to tell us about how they had it all the way. It was all, never in doubt. Uh, but his team did have to sweat it out as they were down 14-0 in the first quarter. Hey, can I say something about that? Uh-huh. Unofficially, all right, the yeah. Eagles got beat. The week before. Yes, because, you know, eight right throw, all right, one point down, they're two points ahead, but the field goal is iced, and yep. I think that they should change that rule. I mean, and then... They were forced to do it again. The wind blew the football, and it hit the, the upright, and then it hit the crossbar and bounced up. I mean, oh, you talking about heartbreak, breaking Chicago? Yeah. Unbelievable. Chicago fans still are not getting over that uh, well and very disappointed. Uh, and they uh, got to watch the Eagles team that, you know, rallied past them and then survived with the missed kick go up 14-0 after 
Breeze threw an interception on the first play from scrimmage for the Saints uh, on a deep ball down the middle of the field. A great interception by the Eagle defender. And Philly ran out to that 14-0 lead. And it could have gone to 21 or at least 17 as they forced a fumble by Breeze, if you remember. But they did not come up with the recovery. It was in the defender's hands as McFadden comes walking in. I, uh, um, I thought we were going to just stick with Strange Man tonight, but McFadden's coming in. All right. And, uh, you know, they it could have been a big, they could have gotten ahead way up or even more if they recovered that fumble. But the, uh, the Saints recovered that. They got set up with the uh, fourth and one, and they went for the fake punt. Um, and that really changed the whole tenure and tie to this game. They were deep in their own end zone, or deep in their own end down around the 30-yard line, and they caught the Eagles by surprise, and they ended up going down and driving to make it 14-7. They also had that, what, 11-minute drive, um, a 19-play uh, drive, and uh, 92 yards. So are we going to switch it up, and we're going to get McFadden on the microphone? Well, we had him in here last week, but we'll get another Happy New Year out of him. Uh, yeah, Happy New Year there, Scott. <laughs> um, so that was a, you know, another big thing where they had that 11-minute, 92-yard drive. And they finally go up, and then they tried to pull a uh, uh, what the Bears did. They impersonated the Bears by, you know, coming, you know, almost blowing it in that uh, late in the fourth quarter. You know, this was a crucial play and it almost gave the Eagles a chance to win it. Saints are up six. It's third down. At that point, if they didn't get any more yards, it's going to be about a 47, 48 yard field goal, which is long enough. And they run a lousy rushing play where they lose five yards in that play to set up a 52 yard field goal attempt. And I thought personally, they should have punted at that point because if you miss that kick, which they did, now the Eagles get to start for a game-winning touchdown drive at their own 42, so you're giving them a short field. They really screwed that up bad, but the Eagles screwed it up worse by rushing. Why were the Eagles in such a rush? They got the ball over three minutes left, and they, they were down just outside the 20-yard uh, line, and they rushed to the line of scrimmage and called the play with one second before the two minute warning. Why didn't they just wait for the two minute warning? Because if you don't end up doing what they do and throwing that interception and you end up scoring, you don't want the Saints to have time. As some of the lights just went out in here. Yeah, Scotty, uh, you know, Les, we were talking in the car. Once the Saints quarterback warmed up, he was good to go. And uh, Well, you know, the Saints quarterback and also the Saints points. secondary as well. As they shut the Eagles out, after they scored 14 points in the first quarter, they didn't score another point for the rest of the game. But they uh, came down to that interception. Alshon Jeffrey, the ball went right through his hands. Um, and, um, you know, it was just, that was just the way it was. And it went into the defender who had um, two interceptions on the day. And if you remember, that kid who got those two interceptions, Latimer, is it? I think is his name. He was the kid who got beat last year on that impossible Minnesota, the Vikings play to beat them on that end of the game, touchdown, catch and run uh, that broke their hearts. Uh, so good for him to get a little redemption. Saints hold on 2014, but I don't know if I was the Rams sitting back watching this game, I might've been thinking, I kind of like my chances because uh, I still think the Saints just haven't been battle tested this year. Uh, they've been in cruise control the last four or five weeks of the year. Their offense hasn't been as explosive. They seem one-dimensional. Michael Thomas is unbelievable. But beyond that, they're not really spreading the ball around. They're not getting as much balance with the rushing attack as well. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, it is a rematch. The Saints beat the Rams 45-35 earlier in the season. Also, the Patriots beat the Chiefs 43-40. to uh, On what was, at that time, the game of the year before the... Uh, Chiefs and the Rams locked up for their 50-point game uh, later in the season. Uh, so it's going to be crazy. Rams at Saints is at 3.05, um, and it's 6.40 late game. Pat, uh, the Patriots at Chiefs, 
They could be getting a little bit lucky with this Arctic blast that's supposed to be hitting them. Uh, this afternoon, the report came in. It might miss them a little bit. So instead of it being, you know, zero degrees or maybe up to 10, they're saying right now it could be in the 20s for this game, but it's going to be at night uh, and it's going to be cold. And how about this? A super blood wolf moon on effect with a lunar eclipse Sunday night. Yes, I heard For this about that. game with an Arctic blast coming nearby. That is interesting. Holy okay, Scott. Cow. Yeah, that, that's very interesting. Now let me let me get, let these uh, give these two predictions. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're right. It's gonna be really interesting. Okay, my friend, United States Air Force veteran, Vietnam era, Richard Cooper's picks are Patriots over Chiefs and Rams over Saints. And my other buddy, Jimmy Silva's picks are, and I don't know about this one. Chiefs 31 over Pats 27, and Rams 23 over Saints 21. With that, I'll let uh, Mike the Mets Maniac have it. All right, all right, and let's get that trivia question over with. Uh, Strange Man's unplugging and getting out of here. It's a rotating chair situation today. Uh, Strange Man uh, trivia, true or false? Both winning QBs on Saturday, January 12th did not throw a touchdown pass, and that is a true statement. Neither Mahomes or Goff threw uh, touchdown passes in that game. We think it never happened before, uh, where both winning teams on one day in a playoff uh, did not throw for a touchdown. Uh, but it's going to be interesting as Mike gets into the seat here. Mahomes in his first year, Marino was uh, pretty much, I think, the only quarterback in his first year to get to the Super Bowl. Can Mahomes do it in his first year as a starter? Remember, he was there last year. Um, and can he beat the, and you, we know the Chiefs have a history of uh, playoff upsets and disappointments. And we also know their coach, Andy Reid, as well, uh, has uh, you know, letdowns in the postseason. But the Patriots haven't won a playoff game since 2006 on the road, uh, in large part because they don't play on the road that often in the playoffs, but they still have lost in this spot at Indy, at Denver, um, and we know that they were not a good road team this year. So I still like the Chiefs' chances here to win it and get to the Super Bowl. And it could set up if the Rams were able to knock off the Saints on the road. You know, the whole changing of the guard, new look offense, the two young up-and-coming teams, Rams with their court, young quarterbacks, and uh, Chiefs. Or if the Patriots and the Saints get there, it's the old guard holding off the young guns, and it's Brady versus Breeze for okay. the first time in a Super Bowl, which could be interesting. Or you could have a rematch, Rams versus Patriots. The Patriots knocked off the Rams and got this whole thing going 18, 19 years ago with Brady and Belichick. Um, could we get a rematch of that and the Eagle and the Rams get their revenge finally on that one? And you would see a young gun, young up and coming, not only quarterback, but also coach against the old coach Brelichek. And also you could have the reverse of that too with Brady or Breeze versus Mahomes, old versus young, two uh, of the MVP finalists. I don't know, I think Breeze might get it, but Mahomes is right there for that. So interesting storylines going in. Do you have any predictions, Mike, on who you think is going to win this weekend? I, I, I see the Saints beating the Rams. Um, I think Drew Brees, the way he's playing. Mm -hmm. and it's, and also, the fact that they're playing in New Orleans, I think that's going to be a factor, too. Right. As far as the, the other game, I, uh, until I see it, I, I'm not going to pick against the Pats. <laughs> Patriots seem to be, without Gordon, more balanced. Right. Edelman was much better, and they're also going to the other guys. Um, and they had the three uh, running backs. Burka is now back as well. He was out much of the year early. Michelle with the great game. Um, and, you know, they have the uh, passing back, James White, coming out. So they have uh, more balance on offense defensively. Their secondary has been their strong suit this year. They're not as great against the run. We will see the cold could really play a big factor in this to slow down both offenses, which would probably be better for the Patriots. But we're going to see what happens there. We know they haven't been great on the road, but they are playing up that big chip on their shoulder. We've been reading the press, and we know we've been getting killed this year in the press. People think we're done, and we're not having a great year. So we'll see what happens uh, with that. We only got a few minutes left. Last week when we were here, it was the Celtics uh, coming off the big, huge win against the Pacers. 
This week they're coming off the big, huge win against the Raptors. The only thing is that win against the Pacers was their fourth in a row. This time they needed that win last night against the Raptors to end a very disappointing three-game losing streak. That's why last week I had much trepidation when, when I said I think maybe, maybe the Celtics got their act together because obviously they didn't as they went to Miami, Orlando, and then came back up to Brooklyn where they got thoroughly embarrassed a couple nights ago in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center to lose three straight. That Magic game was pathetic. They had a 10-point lead in the second half before they just choked it away. Um, so they still got work to do to get consistent, but a nice 117-108 victory against Toronto last night. Um, and that was good. They're still in fifth seed at 26-18. and 18. Bucks, Toronto, Indiana, and Philly all ahead of them. How about some of the point totals coming out of the NBA? We had like four or five teams go over 140 points this week, in, including uh, the Nets, I think, and uh, you know Philly in a big game. Uh, so some interesting stuff. The Nets held off the Rockets last night. James Harden has been like over 40 points every game for the last month, it seems. Uh, they won 145, morning 42 in overtime. The Nets are 23 and 23 playing very well. The Nets are jamming, just like the old 90s slogan. Bring it back. Nets are jamming. Uh, so point totals are up in the NBA. We talked about that early, and that is happening. The Knicks lost in London today, 101-100. The Knicks were up by close to 20 points, I think, early in the first half of this game before the Wizards came back, who happened to be playing much better without their best player for the second year in a row. John Wall, what's the deal with that? Uh, college basketball, disappointing. I have one question for all you UConn fans out here. Since when has it been good enough for the Huskies to play competitive basketball and we're satisfied with that? I am not satisfied with that, and you should not be either. No. Uh, we've fallen to 10-8, and 1-4 and four in the AAC. Uh, they did beat SMU last week to you know get off the schneid and get a victory, but they followed that up with a loss at Cincinnati and a loss at Tulsa where both coaches were ejected. Danny Hurley's not doing himself any favor as his preference conferences have been, uh, you know, very strong words against the officials. And also I wanted to mention, uh, I didn't realize they were this good at home, but Cincinnati has the best record at home in college basketball since 2015, 45 and three. Go Patriots! As Strange Man comes in to get the last word. Uh, we didn't have much time to get to the NHL, unfortunately. Uh, we are off next week. Check out Fatty Roots live and direct uh, Saturday night and next Thursday night. We will be back before the Super Bowl, however, and uh, we will get you previewed for that and see who's in it. As Strange Man said, go Patriots. We'll see you next time.